Well, happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience as a craftsman and an entrepreneur to answer any of your questions. Uh, so for homeowners, uh, this is a place you can ask uh, a huge bunch of really, really thoughtful professional painters anything you've ever wanted to know. What brush should I use? What primer should I use? How should I do something? This is it for you, uh, free flowing information. And for professionals, uh, you know what you're here for. We can talk uh, entrepreneurship, apprenticeship, uh, solving the labor crisis, marketing, accounting, winter work, time off, employee manuals, things like that, and we're gonna get to that later. Uh, we got a very special show today. Uh, I am back from Brazil. Uh, we will recount that trip. Uh, we have the PDCA contractor question of the week. Uh, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, the Paint Contractors Association. They send in a question every week for me, so I will answer that. Also, I have a really cool job site that we can walk through today. Uh, we are doing uh, trim, doors, walls, ceilings, everything, uh, windows on this entire job site here. And uh, we started this week, we're processing through and we're bringing a bunch of rooms to completion today. So I thought I would uh, kind of let you know about that. Um, then what else do we have? Oh yes, uh, yes, the PDCA contractor question of the week. So uh, the PDCA, uh, they were receiving some questions about um, what to do for employee time off during the holidays. And uh, uh, I will go through that question with you and then we'll do a, a job site walkthrough. That'll be real fun. So, um, so this is always tough because we want everybody to work. In Minnesota, work gets a little tougher or at least you have to work a little harder to get it in the winter. So, you know, time off is usually not an issue. Uh, we have a uh, jam-packed schedule, so I want my people to work as much as they possibly can. Um, this is going to be an unsatisfying answer, but I've always just let my people take off as much time as they want. And uh, you think, well, what the heck? Somebody's gonna take two years off. Well, listen, they have a job for a reason because they need the paycheck for something. I need the paycheck for something. So um, it's sort of an equilibrium. If you let people sort of say, uh, take the time off they need, uh, they will they will usually tell you, uh, they will usually either undervalue what they need or they will uh, or they will not take as much time as they normally would. If you have an adversarial relationship with them, like you must work these days, you must work those days, um, sometimes they'd be like, well, why? I wanna work a few more days. So Russ Perry, thanks for watching. Cesar Ramirez, as usual, love to see you guys on here. Thanks for finding the feed on Ask a Painter today. Please guys, uh, I'm trying to move people over from my personal feed to the Ask a Painter feed, so the kindest thing you can do is share this program with people. Uh, so I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that. Uh, in the past, in, in about 10 or 11 years, uh, uh, of which maybe eight or nine I've had employees, honestly, I've just let everybody say, you know, hey guys, Thanksgiving is coming up next week. Um, I won't be working Thursday or Friday, who wants to work? And honestly, half my company wants to work Black Friday. So I will find them work to do it. And Scott Carnelli, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you watching. Uh, again, share this show, guys. We're trying to get people over to the Ask a Painter page versus my personal page. Uh, I would appreciate you guys sharing it. That'll bring people over. Also, for people uh, uh, who have not yet, uh, like the Ask a Painter page, uh, uh, follow it, and you will get instant updates whenever I go live. So Parker Johnson, good to see you. Mike Danahy, good to see you too, man. Um, it's a good uh, good Friday here. So honestly, I've always just let my people set their own uh, own time. And honestly, if, um, if I would have set mandatory work days, uh, it probably would have been worse off. They they take way less time than I would have set aside, or if I had to guess what days they were gonna go off, I probably would have segmented off more days. Uh, my people are good, and they usually wanna work, so um, not really an issue. But I would say, first, just ask your people what they want. It's an unsatisfying answer, but if you're like, wow, we, we really gotta get some stuff done, uh, Christmas is at an odd time. I believe it's like a Monday and a Tuesday, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. So, you know, I think a lot of my people will probably end up taking the week off. I think New Year's Eve is sort of that way too, if I recall. I may be getting that wrong, but honestly, I just let my people uh, tell me what they want. And if it's not unreasonable, I've always done it. And uh, Ernesto, thanks for watching. Um, and uh, that's how I've operated ever since I've had my first employee. I don't think I have ever, actually I know, I don't. I have never turned down somebody's request for time off. Uh, I assume if they come to me and ask for some time off, it's, it's something they actually need. So, all right, if any of you guys have any more input on the employee time off during the holiday things, I would love it. Uh, Ernesto and Daniel uh, Lindquist, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, share this show. We're trying to move people over from my personal feed over to the Ask a Painter live feed here uh, for a whole host of reasons, but uh, I wanna prep it for the new year. 
So let's walk through. Uh, this is one room we've completed already. Uh, ceiling, walls, through here. We're in the final stages of doing our little touch-ups and moving through here, checking some rooms off the list. Uh, the goal is to get this entire project done for Thanksgiving for this couple uh, by next Wednesday evening, close of business. So uh, we got Tina doing some patching in the, uh, in the stairwell there, getting some of that done. Kitchen, trim and everything is completely done here. Uh, ceiling is drying. We just got uh, uh, the finished coat on that there. Everybody's prepping. Tim Marsoli, thanks for watching. Oh, yep, taking down the prep work. We're getting the walls ready. We're gonna see how much walls we can get done today too. So I'll bring you along this side. Oh, Asha and Steven in here, getting some finished paint on this pantry. After a long, long, uh, many hundreds of hours of prep on this main floor to keep this family safe, you can see the, the lengths we go through here uh, to keep everybody safe and also uh, spray professional finishing here. Young Brandon's prepping out these uh, very intricate patio doors. We're going to put those back together, get those back on. We've got our prep work here. Alex is uh, getting rid of some ceiling paint. He just finished the big, the big, beautiful ceiling over in this great room here. Uh, Eddie, thank you for watching. Emerson, Gustavo, everybody. Uh, kindest thing you guys could do for the uh, for this show, share it, guys. We're trying to get people over from my personal page over to my. Uh, uh, ask a painter page here for the start of the new year so share this thing if you haven't liked the page like the page follow it you get instant updates when I go live uh, on this one we are using uh, Benjamin Moore Advance um, uh, for this particular product here well, we got some crazy backlight we got young Nick in here in the little vestibule with Paige they're getting some wall painting done here Eddie, uh, for you, for those of you who don't know Eddie Borbeau, uh, he's got an awesome documentary about his uh, about his life out there. Uh, I'm sure he can put the link up or follow Eddie, but it's a, it's an awesome, awesome piece. So let's go through here in uh, office, see if this is the napping room or if there's actually work going on in here. It looks like there's actually work going on in here. The dream team. Aaron and young Kanan in here. They're kind of just doing some final cleanups of the, uh, of the windows here. We're about to do some final work on the crown and the walls in here. We got our doors that have been completely enameled here, protected, safe from everybody here. I'll be restoring this front door next week as soon as we get all the spraying done in here. Uh, let's see if we can peek in here. Oh yeah, there we go. Fresh Alex in here, he's, he's painting away, putting his final touches on his room. All right, let's see if we can't go sneak into this uh, master suite, excuse me. Yep. Sorry, never try to stop anybody from working. You want to pick up your can there quick, Paige? Sorry about that. I want to sneak in this master suite. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so beautiful, beautiful master suite here. Yeah, Eddie, uh, Eddie put the link there, uh, I Choose, which is an awesome, awesome documentary. Jose Campos, thank you for watching. So Master Suite, uh, this is one of those additions where we started the project and then they added this on, so we're, we're, uh, we used today to catch this up. Fresh enamel, probably about an hour or two ago, in here, over everything. Love, love, love that finish. Oop, got a fan. Oops. Knocked over my own fan. All right. Dual master closets in here. We've got all the uh, all the racking down. Getting it good. My favorite mirrors that are glued to the wall. So we prep them in place. We are not lazy. We always take them off. These are glued. Beautiful master suite in here. Shower through there. We've got the crown. And uh, some other painter had done uh, done an enamel job with a, a very inexpensive uh, roller cover. Uh, and some paint on this stuff, so it was fuzzed up really, really bad. So we took our Perkas and Fest tool, we ground everything down, uh, and re-enameled all that stuff down there. So that's a beautiful, beautiful look. So uh, let's see what else we got going here. And I love, uh, even though Advance and Emerald Trimmy are a thing, you know, they have kind of a long recoat time, or longer than lacquers and stuff. On, uh, on the final coat of it, it snaps dry in like 15 minutes dry to the touch. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. 
Uh, let's see what we got going here. Just pretty standard stuff. So we'll walk out here a little bit, then we'll talk about Brazil. Oh, let's we'll see if I can sneak around the backside here. We're just making sure we got plenty of air circulating because we got lots of warm bodies on this job site and uh, this stuff will stay wet for a long time. So, yep, big, beautiful bank of windows here. Fresh enamel, still wet. Aaron's adjusting some fans here to make sure that we can get some air circulating. Sneak back around here, try not to strike myself up with paint. Awesome, excuse me. All right, so it's an anthill in here, but it's production. It's, uh, it's sometimes frustrating, uh, not only for me, but for the homeowner, because uh, we spend you know two to three days just prepping and it uh, doesn't seem like any progress is being made. Then it all comes together in one day at the end of the week like this. So um, I scheduled out three more days on this job, probably won't take that long. I'll start uh, metering my people out after this. Uh, Adam, thanks for watching. Again, guys, kindest thing you can do is to share this show. We're trying to move people over from the Nick Slavic site to the Ask a Painter site for these videos. There's a whole bunch of features that we can uh, do differently with this. Also, uh, let's talk about the Brazil trip. So, very interesting sort of, uh, I don't, I don't want to sound cliche when I say it was life-changing, but honestly, it, uh, it was really life-changing. Uh, I don't see myself in the same way. I don't see my business in the same way. I don't see my employees or my family in the same way. I don't see my country in the same way for that matter. And uh, it was great perspective. Um, there are a lot of things that the Brazilians are doing much better than us. Uh, and there's a lot of things, uh, problems that they have in their way um, that they can't control. And there's some uh, societal differences and it's very interesting to be introduced to, to that sort of thing. So. Last week, for about eight, nine days, I was in Brazil. Uh, this started probably a few years ago when I met uh, who I kind of call the big three. Uh, there's a fellow named Juliano Alcantara. If you have not uh, met him or followed him, he is basically the face of the Brazilian painters industry. And when I say uh, painters industry, in, in America, we have 16 or 17,000 people in one of our painters chat rooms. In Brazil, they have hundreds of thousands. Think about that. They have hundreds of thousands of painters down there. Um, Giuliano uh, reached out to me. Uh, he speaks Portuguese, I speak English, but thanks to Google Translate, we've been able to communicate. This started about two years ago. Uh, then there was another fella named Ivan Barrigo, who runs a, uh, uh, he's another uh, face of the painting industry down there. He also runs a show called Papo de Pintor, which means the painter's chat in Portuguese, which is basically kind of like Ask a Painter uh, for the Brazilian uh, world down there. And uh, we started talking. I've done a couple of his Papo de Pintor shows. Obviously, I don't speak Portuguese. I speak about eight words now, but I did not then. And uh, so they needed a translator. So along came Ronnie Carlos. Uh, uh, Ronnie, uh, the Portuguese pronunciation is probably Honi uh, or Hon. Uh, and he is uh, one of my best friends on earth. And he is also a translator. Uh, so me and him have been very close. He's been my gateway into that world. And he was sort of the catalyst to get me to Brazil. He approached uh, a trade school called Sinai. He actually is a painting instructor for Sinai. Sinai is the eighth largest uh, technical institute in the world. And think about that. They still have trade schools for painters in Brazil. So I didn't know what to expect when I went down there. Uh, I didn't know if it would be third worldy. I didn't know if it would be this uh, wonder of technological advancements. I didn't know if they would be all better than us, worse than us, the same as us. I knew the people that I was there <sighs> were good people and they're very enthusiastic, but um, they arguably, they like painting more than us. They're more enthusiastic about it. There are more of them and they are more connected. Uh, the only problem is they have some systematic problems uh, with their government that stands in their way. Number one being um, how it was explained to me is if they hire an employee on for $1,000 a month, the government basically tax on $1,000 worth of taxes. So their employment tax is kind of like 100% employment tax. So a lot of them, uh, can't grow a business and won't grow a business because they basically, we think we get penalized for a lot of that stuff. We complain about our taxes. Uh, try 100% taxes down there on your employees. And uh, uh, Ronnie, uh, if, he, if he hops on too, um, he will, uh, he basically uh, says that there's, you get taxed three times. You know, you, you pay a little tax, 
uh, you pay the employment tax, and then at the end of the year, you gotta add up all your income, pay a little more tax, and then there's sales tax, and so it's very, um, I get the feeling like uh, down there, the government is not standing there saying, please grow your business, please grow jobs, please pay more taxes, because you, and let us help you. Here, I get the feeling it's like that. I mean, I'm on many workforce committees and uh, secondary ed committees here where we're basically saying, businesses, what can we do for you? We will tailor government programs, we will tailor uh, private programs, whatever you need to get this workforce going. I don't feel it's the same down there, but I also know I had a small sample size. So, Eddie, let me hear your biggest takeaway that they do better than can be applied in the United States, technical schools. So, I did not expect this, and I feel ignorant because I did not expect it. In America, we think we're the biggest, we're the best, we're the fastest, we're the strongest, smartest, everything else, um, arguably. And I need to do a little more research about the tech schools in the United States. Um, arguably, they are killing us <laughs> when it comes to technical and trades education. Uh, for those of you who, uh, who don't know of the school called Sanai, S-E-N-A-I, it is a, the eighth largest technical institute in the world. Just in Sao Paulo, the capital of Brazil, they have over 90 locations. Just think about that, over 90 locations. They have a few hundred thousand students. I visited a bunch of their campuses there and was bowled away by the human interest that each person plays in one another there. So yes, we have awesome technical schools here. We are good at disseminating technical knowledge, but what, we, but what our technical schools are, at least the ones I know of are basically here's the super high quality technical information come and get it if you want it here it is they have a way of fostering the morale of young people and, and getting them interested in the trade so when I went to these campuses full of 17 18 19 year old people who are super young super enthusiastic tons of women tons of young men uh, from diverse uh, socioeconomic things, they get a little bit of government help, they get a little bit of private help from the industry, and then some people pay. It's a really interesting mix, and they actually have painters trade schools here. Uh, one of the main Sinai campuses that I toured in the heart of Sao Paulo, they actually have um, all the building trades there, and they actually build these houses inside, these masonry houses inside the whole facility, start to finish all the people, um, I was just taken aback and I get a little misty eyed thinking about it, but um, the, the quality of these young people was amazing. Everywhere where I went, I was, I was open welcomely, uh, uh, openly welcomed into these classrooms and, and people were learning how to do masonry, they're learning how to do flooring, uh, basic construction, uh, amazing, amazing things. I walked in on one little vignette here where they had some brick walls laid up and they were casting some uh, scratch coat onto a wall to get some adhesion. And this was this young lady, full protective gear, casting it on, I have a video there. And uh, basically I was sitting there watching her doing it and I was just amazed. She was super efficient, proficient. And the instructor came by and got me, he goes, first day. It's her first day ever doing this. It's a young lady, probably 17 or 18 years old. She's building masonry houses, learning the process of it. So also, if that wasn't enough, uh, just the breadth and width, I spoke with directors there, all the staff, kindest human beings you'd ever, ever, ever want to meet. So what I feel they do, and, and not to say that we don't do this, but I did not get this feeling anywhere I've been in the United States, is from the director to the managers to the instructors, I met all these people, I spent a lot of time with them, I was in their houses, and absolutely amazing. They cared more about these people than the technical training, it would seem, because they understood, and the common theme was that you take care of these people, and the technical training is sort of just a, a, uh, a, um, a product of being a good human being to one another, which, for anybody who follows me, know that I operate under that system, that the painting is the easy part, but fostering humans is sort of the difficult part and the most important part. And they seem to do this on a very large scale, which I'm interested in and over broad ranges of socioeconomic uh, ranges. So, Ernesto, Ramos, uh, how did they feel about the tools and setups you took with you and how's the quality of the paint? Quality of paint is awesome. Uh, Souvenil, the, the paint company, the, the biggest and the best down there, uh, they sort of underwrote my entire trip and uh, we don't have access to that paint here, but I was introduced to it and they have some very, very innovative stuff, very good stuff. Importantly, they have people who care about painters. They have refocused their entire business, entire marketing efforts to show support for the Brazilian painters, which is absolutely amazing, which we kind of take for granted up here. Uh, quality of the paint was awesome. They love my tools. And this is, this is how I felt really um, um, 
I felt really out of place. I felt really awkward and I felt very self-conscious about this because what I did not want to do was go to Brazil and say, all right, look at the big American. He's got all the answers. He's running a big business. He's got all these fancy tools and all this stuff and access to everything. That's what I didn't want to do. Uh, what I genuinely wanted to do was go down there, work with these people, learn what it's like so that when they, they, um, they voice concerns about certain things. I wanted to know, number one, are they real? Number two, is there something we can all do together? And number three, I wanna know where all this enthusiasm comes from. And the enthusiasm comes from a lot of them rallying around their limited supplies, limited access to tools. Uh, the government may be putting a little bit of hampering on them like that. And they, they sort of, I mean, in, to boil it down, they have a common enemy. They have something that they've banded together and they're coming together and they're fighting against this thing. My hopes is that um, if this does turn around for them and their lives are a little bit easier, I hope they don't lose that enthusiasm when a common enemy goes away, which is sort of human nature like that. So, But the tools were absolutely awesome. Uh, they have very inferior quality tools down there. They have access to them, but then the government again taxes on a whole bunch of uh, different things on it there that makes it difficult. So. I spent a lot of time with the guys from Graco down there, Graco South America, and again, just I was bowled away by the nicest people on the face of the planet. I spent many days with these guys, and we did a traveling road show introducing people to airless spraying. And, um, you know, the average uh, Graco 390, you know, somewhere between six and eight hundred bucks here, I think it's like three grand down in Brazil. It's, everybody steps in the way of the painter in order to make it inconvenient to get that stuff. So uh, they have a lot of just systematic problems, uh, systematic things that a lot of them can't control to get over with. So yeah, they, they did like the tools. So Mike Wojohn, Mo Melissa Lorello, we'll be doing a show together soon, Derek Anslam. Also people, um, share this. I'm trying to get people to move over from the personal page to the Ask a Painter page. So kindest thing you can do for this, share it. Also, like the Ask a Painter page and follow it, and you'll get instant at, uh, updates, just like on my personal page when I go live for this stuff. So, Adam Weinhardt, Brazilian people are very nice people. Used to work with a couple of them. I'll agree. Uh, when I was doing my Northeast tour, I had one class that was comprised of like 40% uh, Brazilian transplants, and uh, they had all learned about me through a lot of the uh, Brazilian people down there, and I had learned about them through our Brazilian connections. So, small world. So, Thompson. Oh, Thompson. Good to see you, man. Uh, Stephen Smith, Eddie Garman, thank you guys for watching, John Spencer, uh, absolutely. So, if you guys have any, oh, basically, uh, at the end of the Brazilian trip, um, good perspective. Um, the quality and the quantity of the awesome people down there is amazing. So, it's very hard to sum up something like this, and I don't want to sound like it's hyperbole, but I think we have started a something. I think we've started something and I don't feel like this is the end of it. I feel like this is the start of a very long cultural exchange. Um, we have a huge labor shortage, uh, which I'm working in a small way to solve in my own area and possibly on a larger scale. They do not have a labor shortage. Uh, they have impediments to their work and uh, impediments to access to tools. All the things which we don't have. So you can see there's we're like two Lego pieces that fit like this and if we can do something on a large scale um, it would be my dream to have some of those people up here to experience that. It would be my dream to have a bunch of us go down there and experience that because I think we would all think about our businesses, our families, and how we go about life differently. So it's a, it's a pretty amazing thing. Best way I can sum it up, it's very hard to, but um, I would say I've been, I've been quite a few places. Uh, and the people are always good, uh, and the food is always good, and the weather is always good. But there's not many places I would move my family to. And even though there are some things that are um, not perfect uh, there, I would, I would move my family there. Uh, I just have a feeling that the, the quality of the people that I was surrounded by down there, it would be fine. And things would, things would get taken care of. So uh, it's, it's an amazing thing. And I, and I hear that uh, you know with the, with the new political regime down there, hopefully there's, there can be some changes. I don't know if I'm gonna wait for that. Uh, you know, we've been through a lot of that in America of of change and things like that, and uh, our lives basically sort of stay the same for the most part. I think we have a little more control over what happens to us uh, than waiting for a politician to do it. So I'm not hopeful for that. It'd be great if it did happen, but I have a feeling that these few hundred thousand painters down there who are actively looking to raise the standard of the industry are gonna do way more uh, than an elected official. So Dustin, oh, good friend Dustin. Uh, so great to hear how the industry is thriving down there. 
What a great opportunity to gain new perspective, yes. And uh, for people like me and Dustin, I think we basically dedicate our lives to finding perspective. Um, there's a lot of little hints and tips that we find useful for business, but a lot that's not low-hanging fruit anymore. There's really not many of those for us anymore. So now uh, I'm basically on a quest for perspective, and I got it by the shovel and dump truck full uh, this last week. So um, we are working right now. Uh, to get a uh, one of my Brazilian friends here for the PDCA Expo uh, in National. The PDCA uh, has agreed to help me out with that. I have agreed to facilitate a quite a bit of that. Now we're waiting to see if legally, operationally, uh, uh, logistically, he can actually be here. So uh, look forward to that. If that happens, that will be uh, this will be sort of the first exchange. I go down there, they come up here, and I hope that will be the start of something uh, bigger and better in the future there. So let's see what else we have here. Danny Airy, thanks for watching. Thompson, we're just starting to turn around in Brazil. It seems people are optimistic, I will tell you that. Thompson, beginning of a long journey. I hope so. Matthew Ferris. <laughs> Uh, Rodrigo, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. So, all right, everybody, again, uh, that'll be it for today's show here. Uh, I don't want to stand in the way. My people get nervous when I bring the camera out and we go live. And they're all hiding from me now. But uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you to the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. This is awesome. Kindest thing kindest thing you can do for this show, share it. Especially now that we're moving over to the Ask a Painter page, uh, from my personal page. Um, share this show so people find it. Like and follow the Ask a Painter page so when I go live you get an instant update noon every Friday. Oh, Ronnie, my friend. <laughs> Ronnie is uh, Ronnie is my uh, Brazilian friend and my translator, my best friend down there. So Ronnie, I, I'm just wrapping up the show. Um, absolutely loved our time in Brazil together. Uh, let's see if uh, let's see if we can bring Ronnie on here. Ronnie, I don't know if you hop on here. This show, like the Ask a Painter page, follow the Ask a Painter page, and let's get this uh, let's get this followed by a whole bunch of people here. Uh, and uh, if I don't speak to everybody uh, before Thanksgiving next week here in America, uh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And we're kind of entering the big holiday season here. Um, we're going to get about three inches of snow tonight, give or take. Uh, I will wait just a couple seconds for Ronnie here. But uh, thank you. We'll see if he can get enough signal to hop on quick. Uh, thank you to the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America. Uh, they have been a huge advocate of what I'm doing here, and uh, it's sort of becoming bigger than just a, uh, a house painter from Minnesota. Now uh, We're now in Brazil talking about uh, trade issues and uh, workforce issues, and it's becoming very interesting to me, and I hope that we can affect a larger change with all this. So, uh, Steve Skodak, the director of the PDCA, was actually nice enough to hop on live with me and Ronnie Carlos from Brazil uh, to talk some uh, to talk some stuff here, and uh, I believe if everything works out, Steve might be paying uh, the Upper Midwest a visit here uh, and coming up, and we're going to discuss some more uh, some more stuff like this. So we all have common goals. Uh, the PDCA is leading the way with uh, creating standards and sharing that standard so we can all bring the uh, level of our industry up. Uh, Brazil definitely has the enthusiasm and the wherewithal to do it. They have the people and they're connected. We're trying our best to all raise the standards. So uh, we're going to just take care of our people the best we can, and uh, we will talk to you guys next week. Have a good week. Like the show, share the show, and we'll talk to you guys later. Oh, Ronnie. Opa, uh, Bautarde, my friend, thank you for everything you guys did. You guys know, you guys know down in Brazil what you did. It was an amazing time, and I'll, I, I can never thank you adequately for it. So let's make sure that we can get some of you here this March for the PDCA Expo, and we can start our exchange. Talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend.